Okay, <clears throat> we left off in Proverbs chapter 12. We'll start in verse 12, 15. Again, I apologize for my voice and throat. I've been sick for the last week. So, pray for me. And we're in a part of Proverbs, and we'll be in Proverbs <clears throat> for a while. Is it right or wrong? And we're to take the verses given to us and study to us where we can apply them spiritually to a Christian. And we're to ask ourselves, how am I walking with God? Now, we're not in a rush. We are going to take at least half a chapter a night, <clears throat> maybe more. As we look at the verses and see, and learn from the Bible. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we're going to go through each and every chapter. Whoa, look, at, we're finished. And we didn't study. Then we failed. In chapter 12, verse 15 of Proverbs, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. So we have a fool. And what's the contrast? Somebody that hearkens to counsel. Somebody who, <clears throat> I, I got an idea. Well, let me get some people who have some wisdom, knowledge, and understand. Let me bring forth their idea to them. Let me check my idea with the Bible and see what the Bible has to do. But the fool, whatever it is, I'm right. And you may be wrong. Oh, there be Christians charged at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm right. No, you're wrong. A fool's wrath is presently known but a prudent man covers shame all right simple fool the counter prudent the fool's anger we got anger management today now the bible says be angry but sin not <clears throat> A fool will get angry and rebellious because I'm not going to wear a mask and I'm going to tear the whole store apart because I'm not going to wear a mask. Now there's a different, you know, you, you, you stomp out there and oh, make me got to wear a mask. I go over the car and get a mask. Uh, and then you do your shop or, you know, I'm not going to wear a mask. I'll find somewhere else. Okay. But there are people who are getting in fist fights. There are people getting arrested because of the mask issue. But the prudent man, the man that will use prudence, covers shame. When you go to a prudent man and say, listen, I'm sorry I did that. No problem. I forgive and forget. But let me, no, no, that's okay. All is well. And the prudent man is God. Lord Jesus, here are my sins. I, I confess my sins. You're faithful enough to forgive me my sins and to cleanse me of my sins. Lord Jesus, what about the sin I've done? And God's like, I don't know what sin you're talking about. It's under the blood. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. But a false witness, deceit. Okay, so righteousness and a false witness. Which one are you? Are you in truth or are you out to deceive? <clears throat> I, I, I've been in churches where the preacher gets up there and he tells his preacher Baptist story. And he makes it sound like it was his story. 
And now I heard that three churches ago. I heard the pastor tell you the same story. It was his, his story. That's a false witness. That's deceit. That's not righteousness. Somebody who slanders. That's a law term. A false witness slanders. Deceit is not righteous and they're not speaking the truth. And you better be wise because there, there are pulpits throughout the world. 2 Corinthians 11 says that there are pulpits out there with Satan's ministers in it. And if they are Satan's ministers, Jesus said, John 8, 44, he is the liar and the father of lies. A true man will get up and teach you the gospel. A deceiver will say, say this prayer. Eat and drink the body of Jesus, the literal body of Jesus. Well, get out and go get, get these magazines out. Be good. Give money. Don't do this. Don't. That's a deceiver. <clears throat> a man will get up and say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's a man that speaks truth. And is righteous. There is that which speaketh like the piercings of a sword. But the tongue of the wise is held. <clears throat> uh, forgive me. Can you imagine how does someone take a sharp sword and just jabbing you anywhere and everywhere? And that's what their words do. They, they, they poke at you, dude. Ow. Oh, you do this. You do that. You don't do this. You don't do that. Yeah, great. And complain. Great. But the tongue of the wise is hell. And you got to understand when, when a Christian who is well grown in the Lord comes to another Christian with the Bible and he's trying to correct you. Yeah, it's going to be a jab. It's going to hurt. But there are some medical procedures that hurt that are for your good. I have heard stories. I've never witnessed to it. How they got to put a bone. They got to physically put that bone back where it belongs. I, I, I imagine that's painful. But the other one is someone who belittles you. And it's constantly putting you down. And the opposite of that is, is a tongue of a wise and it's health. It's to nourish you. And when a doctor comes up to you and says, you know, you got to quit that alcohol. You got to quit that drugs. You got to quit the alcohol. You got to quit. You gotta, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, ow. That's health. He gives it nothing. Why don't you do something good? Why don't you make it perfect? Why don't you? That's not help. Especially when you be for a hypocrite. <clears throat> the lip of truth shall establish forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. Now think about that verse for a moment. The lip of truth comes from God. The lying tongue comes from the devil. Let's put the application to the Christian. You speak truth. You tell the lost man he's going to hell and the gospel is the only way to save his soul. You go up and you teach other Christians what the Bible says. Regardless of what people think. You teach the truth, sanctify and see thy word, thy word is true. That goes on forever. That goes into eternity, what the verse says. But lie to somebody. Tell somebody any lie. Any lie. Whether it be a religious lie, or a stupid lie, or whatever it is. It has no place in eternity. And for the Christian, it ends up as wood, hay, or stubble.
But if you're to help correct a Christian, you're to help guide a lost man to salvation. That could be eternal hope. That could be eternal joy. That could be eternal last reward. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. But the counselors of peace is joy. The sea is a foundation of the heart. And it equals imaginations of evil. And when you're thinking about the deceit and how I could deceive somebody, it is coming from a heart of evilness. Again, of lies. It's the foundation of the fatherhood of the devil, not God. And the opposite is counselors of peace. There's joy. And when you're living in a sin-cursed world, there's no joy when you... Because they don't like the truth and they don't like God's peace. And you may think that verse, well, that, that's a contradictory verse. Not when we get to glory. You know, the Bible says about a soul winner. It doesn't say you go out and win them. That's a misconception. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And by that, you gain reward. And if somebody gets saved, you get precious stones. When I'm out there witnessing to the lost and I'm dealing with the saved people, I'm a counselor of peace. You want peace with God? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You want peace with God as a Christian? All right, this is what the Bible says. Do what the Bible says and don't do what the Bible says not to do. Peace. And the Bible says that there is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. There shall... My Bible so marked up. There are so there shall no evil happen to the just, and the wicked shall be filled with mischief. All right, so there you go. There's a controversy for you know I'm just and I'm getting evil. Oh, so you're sinless. You're completely sinless. You have no sin at all in your life. That's where evil comes from. Evil is the consequences of, of sin. Evil is the consequence of doing evil. <clears throat> look at the look at Job. Man, he lost his livestock and his animals. And God said, you know, have you considered my son? He eschews evil. <laughs> yeah, but as you further read the book of Job, you realize that Job was self righteous. And he was counting in self-righteousness. Lot. The Bible says just Lot. That means he's the just we're talking about. Oh, no. Nothing happened to him. He was alive when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Think about that. But the wicked shall be filled with mischief. And you say, well, I know wicked people, and you don't know their private life. You don't know how many medications they have to take. I'm, I'm not going to mention his name, but I, a well-known rock star. I read his, his bodyguard's biography, and I've heard stories about the man. The man had to take pills to go to bed sleep. The man had to take pills to get up. The man had to take pills for, for his diet. He had to take pills for this. He had to take pills for that. He drank alcohol and everything. And you would think you see him on the stage. You think, you think his whole life was just wonderful and great. And yet his life ended with suicide. 
what you see is not always the the idea, the picture. Many a time when you got a Christian in your church, uh, uh, you don't know what's behind those church doors when they're at home. You don't know what they're going through. And they may be getting evil and they're just, they may be getting it because of sin in their life. And then the wicked, they're going to get mischief. In other words, whether you're right or wrong in the eyes of God, you're going to get trouble. If there's one thing that verse should teach in, in chapter 12, verse 21, is the prosperity gospel is a lie. Because Jesus was righteous and holy and God manifested in Jesus was God. Did he have trouble? Well, I guess the prosperity gospel didn't work for him. He didn't have multitudes and multitudes at his death. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, and we all lie. Oh, there are times in our life that we lie. We extravagate the story to make it better. That's a lie. You know, you, you pick up the, I, I can't talk right now, I'm busy. All right, turn the channel. Uh, I can't come to work, so I'm not feeling well. All right, I called out sick. Let's all go to the where we're gonna do. So how you doing? I'm doing fine, and you're not doing fine. Do you know why I pulled you over? Well, no, officer. I have no idea why you. <laughs> uh ninety-nine percent chance you know why he pulled you over. Only on the cases where, where you got tail lights in the back of your car that is not working. He pulled you over to tell you your tail lights ain't working. Don't think you're without lie. But they that deal truly are his delight. Abomination is the lie with God when you tell the truth, God delights in. How are you doing? You know, you may fool your congregation. You may fool your spouse. You may fool your children. You may fool your parents. But you're not going to fool God. And at either judgment, saved or lost, it will be revealed on whether you were true or you're a liar. When you do lies, you're after the father, the devil. When you do truth, you're after the father, God. And when we become adopted in the family of God, why do we go running back to the father, the devil? A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. There's that prudent and foolish. A prudent man is not going to tell you everything he knows. I have Bible studies Friday in the park. If I were to tell everything I know with the Bible, which is not much, but if I, of all the doctrines that I do know, it'd be phew, right over the people's head. Because I'm a doctor of theology. Dr. Stanley William Hayward. And I gotta wean them into the truth. But a foolish man will proclaim his foolishness. I love street preaching. People come up to me, that's not what Jesus would do. You're a fool. 
You don't read your Bible. Because exactly what I am doing is exactly what Jesus done. That guy uh, last week thing was, oh, you know, kicking the stones of the devil. Don't you have a better approach? How about Jesus walking up to the religious people of his day? Hypocrites, serpents, vile serpents. I don't think they like that. I, I think, it was, didn't, matter of fact, didn't Peter go up to Jesus one time and said, Jesus, they're offended. Somebody went up to Jesus and said, you know, you hypocrites, you vile, you snakes, and uh, uh, Jesus, the lawyers got offended. You lawyers, you... <laughs> And the fool, all they're doing is coming up to me, telling me they don't know their Bible. And I can give you three or four verses, right off the top of my head, open up to the Bible, and show you street preaching in the Bible. And I've done it with street preaching. A fool has a big sign hanging off his neck. I'm stupid. I had a guy one time, he taught Sunday school. He goes, well, you know, I don't read the Bible. Yeah, I can see that. I trust other. No, that's what another man told me. Yeah, I can see it. But you're wrong. And then he got mad at me in Fool's Wrath, verse 16. You don't read your Bible. You don't study. You take the word from other people. Then you get angry at me for somebody who's read the Bible, I don't know how many times through, and study it out. And got notes in my Bible. Big neon lights. I'm a fool. And I'm going to open my big mouth and tell you. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Not in the world. any nation. The Bible example would be Daniel and Joseph. And then when Jesus, he becomes the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But the slothful shall be under tribute. Tax. Americans are slaves to their government. I don't know how, I forget what the percentage is, now, but a, a, a citizen of America has to work in his lifetime just to pay the taxes in America. Didn't we throw some tea into the, into the, into the bay for that? Did we not have a war with England over taxes, and we are more taxed today than what England taxes for tea. And then the morons come up, we're going to have a tea party. Fool! We don't drink tea in America, we drink coffee. Those who are slothful and just lazy are not going to get anywhere in business. And the governments are going to make sure, even if you're not slothful, that you're going to be under the hand and under the power of the government. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stew, but good word maketh it glad. Heaviness in a good word. You just got troubles. You got problems. Upset. Sorrow. Whatever it is. Your heart is not getting very well. Your heart is. And that would be the physical heart. Anxieties and fears. and It's not healthy for the heart. But a good word. You, you, you go in. The doctor says the test. Everything's well. I don't see anything wrong. Man, that's good news. You go to class and the teachers pass out the test and 
on your test is a big red A. Hey, that's good news. You go to work, you're sitting at your desk, and the boss comes by, oh, wait a minute. We're going to give you a bonus for that job you did last week. You did hey, that's good on the heart. But you're sitting at the desk, and, and, and the, the talk of the water cooler, and the talk is, you know, not just rumors, but, I mean, it's a fact that, you know what, the company's going to start downsizing. Their I heard there's layoffs in our, in our department. And the doctor says, that's not good. We're going to have to run tests. Now you're hardy. You're stupid. You got heaviness. You got trouble. And don't say, oh, I'm Mr. Wonderful Christian. I don't ever feel like that. That's pride. That's being proud. You're a sinner. And be careful that God doesn't send you something your way, but that you will. The righteousness, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the ways of the wicked seduces them. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The neighbor didn't say the neighbor's righteous. It didn't say, it is, listen, that righteous man, he does right. He's excellent compared to his neighbor. But the way of the wicked seduces them. Who's the them? The righteous and the neighbor. Don't get all high and mighty. Oh, look how holy I am. That man said, God, I thank God I'm not like him over there. Extra, extortioners and blah, blah, blah. Look how great I am. Aren't you glad I'm in church today, Lord? And God may send you somebody wicked, may to seduce you. And maybe you put somebody in that pulpit to seduce you. You know, many pulpits are out there seducing people. Don't you think every pulpit in the world today is a right pulpit? Including the name and title of Baptist. I've been in so many King James Bible Baptist Church or King James Baptist Church. They get up there and they correct the King James. The people sit there. Ooh. Yeah, he's a great pastor. I'm sitting there like you changed the Bible, sir. Bye. There are people who have been seduced by the wicked from a church and they were more righteous than the guy sitting in the pew next to him. And you were seduced because of your pride and arrogance. Thing. Don't think it won't happen to you. The slothful man, there he is again, roasts not that which he took in hunting. I'm surprised he went hunting. I would figure he'd be too lazy to go hunting. Welfare gets rid of the hunter and fisherman and the farmer. State welfare will get rid of the fisherman, the hunter, and the farmer. I don't need to do that. The government will give it to me. I am surprised that Solomon said at least this law, he went hunting. And he shot something. And he's got his whole freezer filled with meat. And he's too lazy to cook it. Now that's, that's stupid. You know what's more stupid than that? Where there's a country, oh, we're starving to death. And there's a bunch of hamburgers walking around. And meatballs. And meatloaf. And beef. But we can't eat that because that might be grandma. 
Or maybe because it holds the signs that we need more chicken. Finally, stop it. No, I'm not going to stop it. But look at that statement. The guy is slothful. He's lazy. He went foot hunting. And he doesn't even have enough to roast what he hunt what he hunted. But the substance of the diligent man is precious. That precious that, that diligent man goes hunting and if he's got the time and ability. Now I've seen a program where they were hunting and they have to hurry strip that, that meat because there are bears nearby. And they gotta hurry up or that they're gonna get, get faced with one of these big bears. But, I mean, if he's got the time, that hunter is going to grab every valuable meat off that animal. And, you know, if he can use the antlers and he can use the eye, he's going to grab it all. And he's only going to remain left over. Can't use that. Nobody in my family likes the heart. Nobody that my family likes the liver. I'll leave it. Oh, wait a minute. The I, my neighbor likes the liver. I'll, I'll bring the liver and give it to him. But the slothful. Rose is not that which he took. He took in honey. Can you imagine the authorities coming to a guy's house and they find him on his bed and he has starved himself to death. And when they investigate, oh, and he's got cupboards of, of canned goods. And he's got a freezer full of meat. But he was not able to go to a fast food restaurant and, and have the, the food delivered for him. And friend, that's today. People today, are, I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to use an oven. I don't know how. I don't even know how to use a microwave. I'll just run to the restaurant. That verse is today. And in my times of dating and trying to find a wife, I have met women. Well, I don't know how to cook. Well, what are we gonna eat? If we, you know, we if we get a wife, what are we gonna eat? We're we gonna eat out. No, eating out is special. I mean, take an egg and put it in some hot water and at least boil the egg. Well, that's too much work. I'll go to the grocery store and get hard boiled eggs already. That's the verse. That's today. That is women today that are not virtuous. That is families today. They go. I, I, my boss was like that. The guy never cooked. He, he ate at the, the convenience store. He ate at the gas food station. Uh, and the guy died. Uh, I think and I could be wrong, but over ninety percent of his arteries were actually hardened. Not healthy. Well, diligent man said, "No, not time to go out to eat." Maybe tomorrow, maybe next May, but ha oh, heaviness. Amen. All right, verse number 28. In the way of righteousness is life. Peter going to Cornelius. Philip going to the Ethiopian eunuch. Anipus going to Paul. Paul going to the Philippian jailer. Me going out preaching the gospel. You passing out gospel tracts. In the pathway thereof, there is no death. Well, you know, my, my grandma's a Christian. She died. No, she didn't. Paul died. No, he didn't. Yeah. Paul, no, he didn't. Peter, he no, he didn't die either. 
Come on, Style, you're a widower twice. Your two wives died. No, they didn't. The Bible says they sleep. The Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Their body sleeps, but they didn't die. There's never been a time in a Christian's life that he ceases of life. Because if he's done with life on this earth right now, man, he's with Jesus Christ. There is no death. I forget which Thessalonians it is, chapter 4, when he talks about the rapture. Those that are dead in Christ, those are asleep. Paul says they sleep. Jesus said, Lazarus sleepeth. The righteous that have done what God has told him to do. Samuel is brought up by that witch of Endor. He goes, I was resting. What you bring me up for? I had no idea there was an alarm clock in Abraham's bosom. What you bring me up for? He wasn't dead. Those that were in Abraham's bosom did not die. Those that are in hell didn't die either. That rich man woke up. That rich man was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. He didn't. Die, he didn't die either. Actually, there is no death for the saved or the lost. Do you realize the moment of conception, you live forever. You're going to go live in heaven with Jesus in heaven, or you're going to live in hell without Jesus for all eternity. John said, he that has the Son has everlasting life. But he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide upon him. Oh, see, no life. Uh, he's still living in hell. It's just, John said, there ain't no, no place to be living. 